So I just got back from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, actually, Raton, if you want to be precise about it. And I had a chance to hang out with the guys from Silencer Co. and get some trigger time behind a Ruger Precision Rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor, which I've never shot before. Uh, like that caliber, not that rifle. And as well as the newest product from Silencer Co., the Radius. Now, I got to check out the Radius a few months ago back in Key West at the Maxim Vice event, but at that, we only had a chance to mount the Radius on mock-up rifles, not real rifles, and didn't do any shooting. So we basically got to see that, yes, it functions as a rangefinder, but it's hard to get a sense of just how crucial that can be to a long-range shooting setup until you have a chance to actually run it in an applicable situation. For me, and this time, it was going out to the NRA Shooting Center out in New Mexico, and stretching the legs of the 6.5 Creedmoor round past a thousand yards, which is a first for myself. I've actually never shot past a thousand yards until this most recent event. So what was the event? Well, Silencer Co. flew out myself, Tim Harmson from Military Arms Channel, good buddy of mine, and a couple of other influential guys, including guys from Guns America, AR15.com, and a couple other places to you know, act as basically ambassadors of the product. So we got a chance to actually run the, the radius in a very uncontrolled environment, and in doing so, can give you guys a very honest opinion on it. Uh, full disclosure, I'm a huge Silencer Co. fanboy. I love their sound suppressors. But I'll be even more honest and say, I was not sold on the radius when I first saw it. I mean, I was like, that's pretty cool, but for a guy like me who lives in South Carolina, the furthest shot I'll ever take on game is like 200 yards. And for, you know, what's considered long range in the low country is like 600 yards. And that's very, very uncommon here. So I wasn't really sold on the product. But when I had a chance to engage targets successfully out at 400, 600, 800 yards, it really opened my eyes, especially when we were doing some freestanding shooting where you know, I was resting the gun on a wobbly uh, pine branch, basically, it's bobbing up and down, and I managed to successfully engage a target at 600 yards that way. So how does the radius work? Well, it's like any other rangefinder, but it's designed to be mounted basically in tandem with the barrel and optic itself. So when you want to zero the radius, what's interesting is what you have to do is measure the distance from the radius to your optic, and then account for that on the actual target you're going to be aiming it at. So the radius laser should be on the target paper. The same distance it is mounted from the optic should be the same distance it should be from the center of the bullseye on the target. It sounds confusing, but it's actually really simple. It makes a lot of sense. It's to compensate for the fact that they're not in line. It's trying to make sure that the radius and your optic are perfectly parallel because you don't want a point of convergence because obviously at some point that point of convergence is detrimental. I digress. Once the thing was, was zeroed in, we were successfully hitting targets way, way out to a thousand yards pretty easily. Now I had a, I had a Hornady uh, dope band basically, so a little, a little uh, dope sheet written on your wrist. And so that took a lot of the guesswork out of it as well. But having the distance in a very specific number meant I could go, oh, 400 yards? Look at my dope sheet. Oh, 6.7 radians? Click, 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 click. Hold, exhale, push, pop. See the impact and hear the impact, which is pretty cool at those distances. And all of these Ruger Precision Rifles were topped with either the Harvester or the Omega. And in both cases, it was very, very cool, very quiet and, and very pleasant to shoot. So no one needed ear protection, which was awesome. Uh, the next day we were supposed to go out and hunt prairie dogs, but unfortunately I had prior obligations and I had to go to a different prairie dog hunt with a different rifle. Now what's interesting is when I was out at that next prairie dog hunt out in Isabel, South Dakota, um, I learned something very, very important. When you're shooting a target the size of a prairie dog, right, knowing the distance to that target is the difference between a clean hit and missing by three times the, the target's width or whatever, right? So I had a couple of shots where I was like, oh, damn it, I did everything right on my part, but actually I just misjudged the distance between me and said prairie dog. And it really made me appreciate how much easier it would have been with something like the radius mounted on the rifle I was using in that situation. Now, given we were only shooting out to a maximum of 500 yards, but on such a small target, like I said before, knowing the amount of drop to compensate for is absolutely crucial to successful hunting. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I don't hunt prairie dogs, I don't need to adjust that much. Well, you really do if you're gonna hunt any sort of game ethically past 300 yards, because most shooters aren't good enough realistically to place rounds on target in such a manner to make sure that the animal that you're harvesting suffers the absolute minimum 
at that sort of distance. They just aren't that good. After getting so much trigger time with the Radius, I thought I would be remiss if I were gonna take any sort of ethical hunting shots in the future past 200, 300 yards. Now sure, I'm a fairly proficient shooter and maybe I wouldn't need it, but that extra bit of confidence it would give me would ensure that I knew I was doing my part of being an ethical hunter. So at $999, is it worth it? Depends on how much long range shooting you do. If you take your rifle to the, to the range and shoot at 100 yards every single day, don't bother. This thing is, is not for you. As much as a Sonsor Co. would love to sell you boxes of the things, this is not a crucial product for you. Now, if you're a hunter and, you, and you've seen a couple of, of, uh, of deer or mule deer or pigs that you're like, you know, I want to shoot that thing, but I'm not sure how far it is. And you take a shot like on a pig or some such and you find, oh, wow, I overshot that by about, you know, seven or eight inches. The thing is, when you're shooting on a lot of this muddy ground and whatnot, you can't actually tell how high or how low you missed. And with a lot of those animals, the second you miss, they're gone. So if you're looking to stretch the legs of your favorite cartridge and want to make sure you can more ethically and more accurately hunt at those distances, I think the radius could be a real lifesaver. If you're the kind of guy who takes shots at a static range at known distances, the radius really isn't, isn't there for you. Will it look cool on your latest and greatest AR-15? Absolutely. It looks, looks like a little robot chilling on the side of your, your gun. That's badass. Do you need it? Probably not. Do I? Mm, before this, uh, this shooting event, I would say no, not really. But after, given how much more I, I, I've been getting into long range shooting, I would say yeah. I think it beats the hell out, out of a handheld rangefinder because unlike a handheld rangefinder, you don't have to get off the rifle. You can just aim, look, oh, okay, there it is. You're, you, don't, you don't lose the target going, oh, I think I see something. Let me range it. Okay, oh, where to go, where to go, and you lose it in your, in your sight profile or sight picture. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty badass. Oh, one thing I meant to mention is when you're ranging something with the radius, it gives you more than just a primary distance. It also gives you any secondaries in between. So if you're aiming through tall grass at an antelope or some such, it'll show you two numbers, the distance to said tall grass and the distance to the antelope, which can be pretty useful if you're shooting in a target rich environment like prairie dog hunting, because then you'll have that second known distance already. And you can, you can say, oh, the difference between those two distances is two MOA or two mil rads or whatever. And so you can go click, 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 boom, click, 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 boom, get both targets. It's pretty badass. Now, now, if you guys want to see anything else reviewed by Silencer Co. or from Silencer Co., shoot me a line in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because I'd like to hit that 5,000 subscriber mark. And you can see it's dreadfully, dreadfully close at like 4,800 something uh, subscribers. So help me help make gun history and help me break that 5,000 subscriber barrier. Thanks, guys.